All right, in this video we're going to be looking at interrupts, and I'm going to use the serial port as an example for where interrupts could be useful for you. To begin with, let's get a definition of an interrupt. So an interrupt is a signal to the processor normally caused by hardware that indicates an event needs immediate attention. Right, so our keywords here, signal to the processor, caused by hardware normally, that an event needs immediate attention. All right, so basically even in its definition, an interrupt oh, interrupts the current process and the processor reacts by saving the current program state then entering an interrupt service routine, also known as an ISR, services the interrupt, then returns to normal execution. Right, so that's fundamentally how it works. Okay, interrupts the current process, Processor stops, saves where it's currently up to, runs the interrupt service routine, then after it's finished, returns back to normal execution. So an interrupt, key feature of it is, normally they're unexpected. Right, as far as the software is controlled, they're unexpected. Now, an interrupt could be, for example, a button being pushed, could be a byte received over the SPI port, could be an ADC conversion is complete, the timer is uh, got to its top value or overflowed. Okay, so there could be a range of things that have happened. But most of all, they are unexpected. So your code cannot expect when it's going to happen. So the, the interrupt functionality of the processor is built to be able to handle these unexpected events. All right, as well as that, there are a range of interrupt sources. sources, which we're going to have a look at down here shortly, um, but they are typically, once an interrupt gets called, the ISR should be as small as possible. In other words, the code inside your ISR function little code as possible in here. And the reason that's the case is because you don't want to be spending all your time handling interrupts and then running code inside of it. You want to be getting back to your original code, your original program, as fast as possible. So your ISR, for example, our serial port, if you receive a byte, jump into the ISR, put the byte into a buffer, and then go back into the main program <coughs> and set a flag or do something that says, all right, you've now got something to process. Don't do the processing of the information inside the ISR. Leave that to the main program. ISR should enter, do have as little code as possible, and then exit as quickly as possible. And those are the rules of thumb of interrupts. There's so a few other things we'll talk about in terms of volatile variables. 
noting that any variable that is modified inside an interrupt should be declared as volatile right because of the fact it's unexpected so we don't want our compiler making any assumptions on our behalf but before we get to that let's have a look at the sources of interrupts for our microcontroller so this one here is the AT90 USB 1287 uh, interrupt vector table now vector number we actually see on this particular microcontroller we've got 38 different sources of interrupts now this list is actually in priority order so this means that interrupts it interrupts with a lower number have a higher priority which means if by chance two interrupts were happen to go off at the same time one with the highest vector number would be serviced first that's just how the the interrupt system works so that's what happens if two go off at once we see that generally apart from our external reset which is something special all of the most uh, high priority interrupts are external interrupts and generally that is a transition on an I open normally an input okay but so it is a digital change and that's really handy if you want to be looking at debouncing or something like that we use external interrupts right you can also use them for example for uh, synchronizing if you've got square wave coming in on one of these to synchronize everything to a external signal um, or for example external interrupts coming from for example the real-time clock which uh, will have an alarm pulls an external interrupt and the microcontroller can service it so they can be from buttons user input or other processes see we've got some USB ones and we see we've got a whole lot of timer interrupts before we come down to the ones we're interested in which are the comms interrupts and then down to here got a few more timer ones so not all the timers are grouped together so you can pick your timers based on the interrupt priority if that's something you want to do and also the ADC has some interrupts associated with it and there's one for our two wire interface all right so you can sort of categorize them there's a little bit here in terms of USB but we're not going to be worrying about that um, within this course all right so the one that we're interested in today is the interrupt number 26 you are you sat one rx complete all right so this is number 26 what we've got here is an interrupt that we are now going to want to set up within the control registers to be able to use um, within our software so that whenever the serial port if I draw it here remember there's our TX and RX whenever a byte is received via USAT1 trigger an interrupt so that we can service that as fast as possible all right and therefore not miss bytes quite often our serial port is only double buffered at best which means if you receive two bytes and you haven't read the first one then you're going to start clobbering over them and you're going to lose information right so by using an interrupt we're going to hopefully make sure that we receive bytes and buffer them ourselves and therefore don't miss any critical information all right so how do we use this well there's a couple of things that we need to do the first thing is so using an interrupt first thing is enable the interrupt in the peripheral control register so within one of the control registers 
associated with the peripheral of interest, in this case it's the serial port, the UART, we need to have a look for the interrupt enable bit. Okay, and we see it here. This is the RX complete interrupt enable bit. So we want to set that equal to 1. And this bit is 1, enables the interrupt on that particular event. All right, so we want to set that guy. Number 2, we need to set the global interrupt enable. So there's two levels of interrupts in a microcontroller generally. We have the local enable and we have the global enable. Now this SREG is actually a fairly um, unused register apart from this one particular bit here. Bit 7, the global interrupt enable. So we need to enable global interrupts. And finally, we must have an ISR in software. All right, so we must have an ISR, our interrupt service routine, somewhere. Or else, if we don't have it, and the microcontroller triggers an interrupt and goes to that program address, who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what code's left there? All right, so there's three things that must happen. Local, enable of the interrupt. Global, enable of the interrupt. And then we must have an ISR associated with that. And this goes the same for all peripherals here. All right, it doesn't matter what type of peripheral, we're just using the UART as an example. But all of them have a local, you must do the global, and you must have an ISR. Okay? Same principle applies to all of them. So let's see how we would apply this. In our program, so let's say it's in our setup part of our code, we would have the associated UCSR1B setup. Now I'm only going to do the corresponding bits that we need. UCSR1B equals in binary 1 because we want a 1 to be able to enable that. And I'll leave usually the rest of the bits associated with the serial port. We need to do the global. And the easiest way to do that is to actually do it in assembler. Um, so if you go hash ASM SEI in double quotes as a string. So this means perform a assembler instruction. So that's global interrupt enable. That's the local enable. Right, there are other ways you do it. You can write to this register, just like you'd normally do. So you can bit mask and just write that one if you wanted to. And we're also going to need our interrupt routine. Our interrupt service handler or service routine. Now the easiest way to do this using Atmel Studio is to do a add an extra include hash include, and this should go at the top of your program, and we're going to add in avr slash interrupt dot h. Okay, so this should be at top of your program. We're going to declare our interrupt service routine. So these normally show up in, I think, pink, isr, and then we're going to put inside the brackets here, we're going to say the associated uh, vector number. Now this is actually a define that's put in that header file. So this one is our function declaration. All right. And this part here, this define, In the above header file. Now how do we know which one we need to use? How do we know what goes in here? Well if we come back to our table we can see USR, US, USART1 and we put an underscore for the space RX and then we add vector onto the end of it and that that should work for all of these. You can always check the header file though if you're looking for a particular one that you can't find. Alright so that's how you declare it. You then 
create somewhere in your program the ISR function. A few important things to remember with our ISR. It cannot accept any parameters. All right. Cannot accept any arguments ever. No interrupt service routine ever can because you can, it's called by hardware, not from software, and therefore cannot return any uh, well any data. We'll say, all right. So effectively, though we don't say it, it's void void. Cannot accept any arguments. Cannot return them. Very fundamental the way these work. In here, this is one associated with receiving a byte. We could go something like buffer index plus plus equals u d r one. All right, and that could be as much code as we have in our ISR. Remembering short as possible. Now, a couple of things to remember. Our buffer is not declared in the ISR. Right? Remember, any variables that we would declare within curly braces are local to them. So both buffer and index are global variables. All right. Now, something special has to be used when we declare these because of the fact that we're using them inside an interrupt service routine. To avoid the compiler trying to do some sort of optimizations and changing the way these are used, we actually need to use a keyword, volatile. So when we declare these, we would use keyword volatile. Let's say it's char buffer 356, for example and volatile uh, do unsigned char index equals zero all right but very important we have to have that volatile keyword if we don't then this code could not work and this is an extremely hard bug to find because you have no idea why it's not working all right so volatile required for all global bars used inside. In fact, we should correct that to modified inside an ISR. Okay, absolutely required. This is a very common bug that people forget to do this. Don't forget that in this function it's alright if you want to have if index is less than you know, 255 or whatever it is, all that sort of stuff's fine, all right? You don't want bugs coming in because of, you know, you're trying to do no code in here. So if statements, loops, and things are fine if you have to have them, but try and keep this code as short as possible. All right, once we've done that, that's basically all that's required to get this interrupter function, all right? So these declarations, just remember, should be at the top, and we have our include which allows us to declare these ISR functions we've enabled the local and the global interrupts and then we've set up we've written an ISR routine which handles the data coming from that register and this could be from the ADC could be coming from the SBI port um, could be doing something with timing whatever it happens to be but that's all there is to to interrupts really really useful really powerful and so much better than polling because you get rid of uh, software waiting for things um, and you get the hardware to do the hard work for you.